Hello, I am Aditya and my teammates are Apurva and Sergey. Today we are going to present variants of the LSTM architecture. LSTMs, also known as Long Short Term Memory, were introduced by Hotschreiter and Schmidt Huber in 1997. They are a variant of recurrent neural networks and are capable of solving long term dependencies. A problem faced by recurrent neural networks for a very long time was the problem of vanishing gradients. The LSTMs are capable of solving this problem by introducing a forget gate. They are also capable of remembering information over long periods of time. This is the Siamese LSTM. Traditionally, Siamese twin fishes are known to have a lot of differences and fight a lot with each other. Initially, the LSTMs behave in a similar way since the weights are initialized randomly, but over time they overcome these differences and get along. The Siamese LSTM consists of two separate LSTMs which are trained simultaneously over time. The weights of both these LSTMs are symmetric and are kept the same even during training. The LSTMs handle time series data as shown in the figure here i1, i2, i3 and i1, i2, i3, i4. These are two separate inputs fed to each neural network at given time steps. To train this model, we pick random samples from a given class and give this pair a label of 1. Then we pair this current data sample with another sample from a different class and give it a label of 0. Since this is a classification task, the function we choose as the cost function is the binary cross entropy and the optimizer is ADA delta. The only trick here is while back propagating the weights to train the neural network, we average the weights of both the LSTMs and then back propagate to maintain the symmetric weights between either LSTMs. For tuning the hyperparameters to get the best results, the initialization of the weights for the LSTMs was Xavier initialization. And the bias of the forget gate is set to a high value of 1.5 to help solve the long term dependencies and avoid the problem of vanishing gradients where the gradients become zero. This architecture proves to be a very good concept for feature engineering as it automatically engineers the features without us explicitly specifying what features are important and what are not. The output of the last hidden unit of the LSTM will be our feature vector for the dataset which will be used for further classification tasks and the results we obtain are close to state of the Website fingerprinting is a well-known problem. Attacker could fingerprint the websites by amount, size and timing of packets and deduce the website someone was visiting, even if someone was using anonymity tools like Tor. There is certain information uh, people would like to keep private about themselves, such as illnesses and disorders, medications and uh, any other private details of our lives. Religious views is also quite a sensitive subject, since in some countries you could be executed for believing in the wrong God. As a result, it is important for protocols that aim to provide privacy to be designed and implemented fingerprint proof. And given that it is impossible to prove that protocol is not fingerprintable, the best we can do is to continuously attack it and see if we are close to breaking it and whether or not protocols developers have to make any changes. The data. Uh, we created our own script to collect traces of the websites, but ultimately decided to go with the public data set. Uh, so we are able to compare our result to other researchers result. We have fingerprints for 93 websites and 90 traces for each of them. That had to be shaped in a certain way to be used to train LSTM. 
Originally, for every packet in sample we had two values, timestamp and direction, one for upstream and minus one for downstream. We modified it as follows. Uh, we switched from absolute timestamp to relative by finding time difference between current packet and previous one. Uh, if relative timestamp was zero, uh, then we assigned to it a very small value. Uh, then we multiplied relative timestamp by direction, such that now downloaded data is negative timestamp and uh, uploaded data has a positive timestamp. And we split all of it into 20 buckets. Uh, and this, this step actually shows the essence of LSTM. It models connection between events located at different time throughout the whole series. In our threat model, it is assumed that the attacker could monitor limited amount of websites to get their fingerprints. There are two models for fingerprinting. In closed world model, we assume that user visited one of the monitored websites. In open world model, uh, we assume that user could visit any website on the web, including the ones attacker does not have fingerprints for. In that case, Attacker should be able to correctly determine the visited website is not on the list of fingerprinted ones. We used closed world model for now and leave open world for future work. As a result, we were successfully able to derive the feature and their weights using LSTM and then applied QDA and achieved 88 success rate, which is 63% better than our baseline model. Our baseline model was a very simple KNN for first 15 packets. To put our rate in context with result from original paper, we have to notice that they used open world model, which is inherently more complex. It has tr true positives, true negatives, along with false positives and false negatives. Uh, and so they could vary parameters of their model to get different rates. And this is basically a trade-off between minimizing false positives and maximizing true positives. And their true positive rate is generally lower than ours, but uh, it is unreasonable to directly compare closed world and open world and we could not say that our model is uh, better than theirs. However, we still have uh, room for improvement, which would be further discussed later. Uh, and all in all, we've got a very good result. As the features were derived by Siamese OSTM, there is no reliable way to determine what features were. However, we can make a few guesses. To visualize the hidden unit representation of the LSTM, we take the first two principal components of the last hidden unit vector representation of the data. This is what the plot looks like. With further investigation, we saw that the websites which are represented using the green color are from China, Taiwan and Japan region. Also, the websites which are represented using the red color are from the European region. And the magenta color represents the websites which are popular in US and Europe. Since these websites are popular in US and Europe, they have their content distribution networks working in both the regions. And this fact can be observed in this figure at the top left and bottom left. The accuracy on the test set of this data is 88% and the classifier that we used for this is quadratic discriminant analysis. We infer that the LSTMs have learned to push websites into unique feature spaces and derives the feature vector by aggregating their differences. We apply, we apply the same algorithm for detecting musical instruments. In the figure shown, the wind instruments get clustered at the bottom of the figure while the string instruments are getting clustered at the top of this figure. But keyboard instruments are considered as string as well as wind instrument. For example, piano. In this figure, piano is represented by pink color. The piano has strings but they are struck by hammers. 
so it is not clear whether it should be classified as a string instrument or a wind instrument and this confusion can be seen in this figure as the pink dots are spread between the two major clusters accuracy on the test data set for this is 87 percent and the classifier that we used was support vector machine with a radial basis function kernel now we apply a variant of this model which is an lstm model with a dense feed forward for regression and the data set we used was rate my professor in which we have to find the rating of a professor based on the reviews that his students give him in this model each word is embedded using glove embeddings and has a dimension of 300. Here are few approaches to improvise our model in future. Hinton and others show a simple way of regularization in neural networks, dropout, which can be applied to LSTMs. This would help in regularization and make the model more robust to noise. The next step would be to use better resources such as Titan GPUs which were not available to us right now to build to build more deep learning models for the website fingerprinting problem we would like to try to vary amounts of buckets and vary the parameters of lstm itself and the classifier also perform it on the open world model to see the performances of our technique in the real world condition thank you